Hello and welcome back to another episode of Sunday League Football following the trials and tribulations of Guide Villa. This week we take on fellow Division 1 contenders Ewood Blues. Um, Ewood Blues finished 8th in the Super League in one of the playoff spots but they were chosen to go in Division 1 for the second half of the season. We beat them 4-3 in the Super League fixture early on in the season. Let's see how we get on in today's game. Starting off with, um, who do we have in the net? Ryan Fair in the net. Left back was myself, Johnny and Dan at centre back with Brad Gorman at right back. We had three in the middle, which was Hindle, Dom and Brad Blackshaw with Matt Homie on the left, Ryan Steele up front and Ben Grady on the right wing. It's a very lucky escape at the back post for us here. The lad who crossed it in, the number 10 for Ewood Blues, tricky player. Really good, really hard game against him today. Back stick! Now as this ball comes across, he's going to win the header and it comes down off the bar and it's eventually cleared away and only four minutes in and Ewood Blues have had the majority of the chances and the highlights. Eventually comes through to the other striker who drags it wide of the post. And again, another let off for us early on. The famous Brad Gorman throw in. I don't think he can make it out on the video as well, but the six yard box was just full of sand. I think that's why he misses that chance. It just doesn't bounce right, it just falls flat and goes under his foot. Looks worse than it actually was just because of the pitch conditions. Oh, absolute slice central here. Johnny goes flying in, and that's an easy decision for the referee to give a penalty. I don't think we argued about this one. I think we just accepted that Johnny would never get in there and just clattering the striker. Giving them a penalty 15 minutes in. And Rasfair dives the right way, but unfortunately can't reach it. Very good penalty, very well hit. And Ewood Blues go 1 0 up. Take kick off. One nil down. And free kick on the edge of the box, which Steely is obviously going to take. He's going to take the majority of the free kicks. You might see why a bit later on. This one comes in. Keeper fumbles it. And it's in the back of the net. And 21 minutes in, 22 minutes in, just we definitely didn't deserve an equaliser. We were absolutely stinking the gaff out. This lad again, the number 10, Nico Bennett was his name. Didn't play in the first game against us, but a really tricky and good player for them. Said he's not played in eight years on Sunday, so you never know, I might get caught to one of the bigger teams in Blackburn after this performance. Hey, boys, come on! Hey, 
Surely Brad's going to take a touch there. Is he ever scoring first time on the volley at the back post like that? Is he ever doing that? Bit of a scramble in the middle. Breaks kindly through with Blues. Comes out to the right. Cross to the back post. Volleyed down into the floor and wrong foots everyone. Including our keeper Raz Fay. And the ball ends up in the net and Evil Blues retake the lead. With 10 minutes to go before half time. <laughs> Chance from a corner here for Ewood Blues, a double save for Raz Fay. I mean, it's bad when you're having to throw like keeper saves in, as classing them as highlights because we played that poorly in this first half. And eventually I'll take this free kick and the referee will gladly blow up for half time. An absolutely stinking performance at first half. I think that's one of the worst we've played all season, really. Um, so I made some changes, dragged myself off, put Patty at left back. Um, I also took off Ben Grady and somebody else for uh, Kieran Brown, the number 15 you can see on the right there, and Alex Mercer on the far left side. I definitely, I definitely took three off. Maybe Brad, Brad Blackshaw in the middle, and then put Matt in the middle, and then two wings. Yeah, that sounds about, sounds about right. I'll work it out. <laughs> and Steely will get us underway for the second half to start. We need to find a way to get back into this game. Poor clearance for the defender. Key Brown picks it up into Steely. Turns. I would say turns quickly, but I think the Euro Blues player always getting there. He's took contact of about three of them and gone down. The number 11 is having a word with the referee about it. I don't really know what he's complaining for, and he says it one too many times, and eventually. It's the easiest £12 at Lancashire FA will ever make. A booking for number 11 for complaining about the free kick. He could have come over and had a look at the video. Yeah, it would have shown him it was definitely a free kick. Straight away. How we go? Squeeze boys! Key Brown running the ball in the middle, Hindle picks it up. Eventually, it's very scrappy in the middle there, and eventually Ewood Blues break through. The striker drags it wide of the post. We, they had so many chances in this second half, Ewood Blues to finish the game. We could have been 5 6 1 down at one point. Lovely nutmegs from Key there, plays it through to Matt Owen. The centre back is playing in two or three yards onside. And the liner has flagged for offside. I mean, I've had to beep out the language that I used here because. But I just feel like just let the referees make the decision. If people are going to cheat like that, just let the referee decide. I'd rather the referee get it wrong than him just purposely put his flag up. Again, another chance wasted from Evil Blues. Fullback's absolutely devastated. Cleared away over the top by Dan. Steely goes through. Keeper heads it out. Mercer with an open net. Chooses not to shoot. Takes a couple of touches and then back pass. A 
another chance for Ewood Blues here. I honestly don't understand how he got away with it. Tackle by Dan Williams just inside our half and that'll be another £12 to Lancashire FA. I would say the referee was quite happy after the first booking but it looked like he yellow. Now this one. So key flicks on here, the bounce steel is spun in behind. Now for me, that that's a Stormwall red card. Steely threw on goal. The referee's explanation was that he wasn't in control of it. But the reason he's not in control of it is because the guys pulled him down. Like if you've seen Steely play that that, that that's a goal. Like he's through one on one. Yeah, a bit of a weak explanation to be honest. But just after that, in the seventy eighth minute, Ewood Blues go through a great chip ball by the number ten again. And the other player slips it through Ryan Fay's legs and puts Ewood Blues 3-1 up with 10 minutes to go. Key Brown went down injured just at the end of that highlight so I had to bring Ben Grady on um, to replace him. And it turned out to be quite a good substitution because we first touched the ball since coming on. Dinks it over this guy. I'm begging him to square it, which he doesn't do, and he just slams it in the bottom corner. So you've got me and his ear screaming square, 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 and just don't listen to me. Simple as that. One thing to learn from that clip. Ten minutes to go back to 3-2 now. Big header from Dan Williams. Steele's going to get on the end of it as well. Players Grady through, but overhit pass. Closes this down well. Again, the defender who was booked previously slides in from behind, wins the ball, but you're always in danger when you slide in from behind and. I don't know whether the referee thought this was a second yellow or where he thought he was lucky to get away with a red for the first one. He decided to now even it up, I'm not sure, but he does in fact send him off. So Ewood Blues down to 10 men. Steely will whip another free kick into the wall. It's whipped in front post, clear. Dan heads it back across, Mercer's at the back post to head it in, yes, and with five minutes to go, we have equalised to make it 3-3, smash and grab is what you would call it, it's definitely not a deserved equaliser, we're absolutely awful. And then two minutes after that, yes, get in. Get in. love bites and everything behind the goal. Got to feel sorry for Ewood Blues after this result. I mean, they were the better team for 80 minutes. Absolutely dominated us. And we're just lucky that we've got lads who could put it in the back of the net towards the top end of the pitch. Steely goes through again, rounds the keeper, open net. You think it's a tap in, manages to slip. Eventually pulls it back to Dom, who strikes first time. And it's a great save from the keeper to tip it out for a corner. The pitch is down at Pleasanton, although they were dry after the wet week we've had, there's some serious mud baths in the middle. And at this point we were hanging on for dear life. I only put the, the clock on the graphics to 93 minutes because refs usually play till 90 and then blow up, we'd never usually get added time. And obviously with 10 seconds to go to the 93rd minute and Dan's oh, tackle has earned him a second yellow card. Ref actually said he's only evening it up for the other guy getting sent off, which, yeah, a bit of a strange one. But 
So you'll see here the clock's actually run out because we've played that long. I think this was up to like 96 minutes when this happened. We were screaming ref every time the ball got kicked long. But yeah, very unusual to play that long, especially Sunday. Yes, Ross! And even Blues could have snatched a draw very late on. Rasphere's got this ball now, taking his time over the kick. And eventually, the referee should blow to full time to give us our second win in Division 1 and putting us top of the table. Get in. Two wins from two in Division 1.